Welcome to a lesson on the transient solution and steady periodic solution for damped force motion and practical resonance. In the previous lesson, we justified the formula for the general solution for damped force motion shown here in blue. When we have damped force motion, the complementary solution X sub C is called the transient solution and is identified by X sub TR, and the particular solution X sub P is called the steady periodic solution identified by X sub SP. Let's talk about why this is. The transient solution X sub TR goes to zero as T approaches infinity, as all the terms involve an exponential with a negative exponent. Looking at the three possible forms for the transient solution, even when we have the first form, R sub one and R sub two will always be negative, which is why the transient solution goes to zero as T approaches infinity. So for large T, the effect of the transient solution is negligible, and we see essentially only the steady periodic solution, hence the name transient. Notice that the steady periodic solution involves no arbitrary constants, and the initial conditions only affect the transient solution. Thus, the effect of the initial conditions is negligible after some period of time. We might as well focus on the steady periodic solution and ignore the transient solution. See below for a graph given several initial conditions. Analyzing the graph, notice the initial conditions are negligible after some period of time. The speed at which the transient solution goes to zero depends on P, and hence C, the damping or friction constant. The bigger P is, the bigger C is, and the faster the transient solution becomes negligible. So the smaller the damping, the larger the transient region. This is consistent with the observation that when C equals zero, meaning no damping, the initial conditions affect the behavior for all time. Let us describe what we mean by resonance when damping is present. Since there were no conflicts when solving with undetermined coefficients, there is no term that goes to infinity. We look instead at the maximum value of the amplitude of the steady periodic solution. Let C be the amplitude of the steady periodic solution. If we plot C as a function of omega one with all their parameters fixed, we can find its maximum. We call the omega one that achieves this maximum the practical resonance frequency. We call the maximal amplitude C of omega one, the practical resonance amplitude. Thus, when damping is present, we talk of practical resonance rather than pure resonance. A sample plot of three different values of C is given in figure 2.8 below. As you can see, the practical resonance amplitude grows as damping gets smaller, and practical resonance can disappear altogether when damping is large, as we see from the bottom graph. To find the maximum C, we need to find C prime of omega one, we found the formula for C in the previous lesson, and now we just call C a function of omega one. Next, we find its derivative, and then identify whether the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. The derivative is zero when omega one is equal to zero, or when two p squared plus omega one squared minus omega sub zero squared equals zero, which means the derivative is equal to zero when omega one is equal to the square root of the quantity omega sub zero squared minus two p squared or when omega sub one equals zero. If omega sub zero squared minus two p squared is positive, then the square root of the quantity omega sub zero squared minus two p squared is the practical resonance frequency. That is the point where C of omega sub one is maximal, which follows from the first derivative test. If omega sub zero squared minus two p squared is not positive, then C of omega one achieves its maximum at omega sub one equals zero, and there is no practical resonance since we assume omega sub one is greater than zero in our system. In this case, the amplitude gets larger as the forcing frequency gets smaller. If practical resonance occurs, the frequency is smaller than omega sub zero. As the damping C and hence P becomes smaller, the practical resonance frequency goes to omega sub zero. So when damping is very small, omega sub zero is a good estimate of the practical resonance frequency. This behavior agrees with the observation that when C equals zero, again, when no damping is present, then omega sub zero is the resonance frequency. Another interesting observation to make is that when omega sub one approaches infinity, then C, the amplitude, approaches zero. This means if the forcing frequency gets too high, it does not manage to get the mass moving in the mass spring system. This is quite reasonably intuitive. If we wiggle back and forth really fast while sitting on a swing, we will not get it moving at all, no matter how forceful. 
Fast vibrations must cancel each other out before the mass has any chance of responding by moving one way or the other. I hope you found this helpful.